this that when I actually present it to the mayor, uh, and why so, and this will make it so hard to recruit and be competitive, even with the pay raise. You know, I consider 11 agencies about our size, and with the pay raise, with a 10% pay raise, out of the 11 people on there, we were number 10 in that list. I'm putting in Grandma, ULM, Tech, West Monroe, places like that. We were 10 before the pay raise. With the pay raise, we still remain 10 uh, behind some of the other local agencies. So that it was a huge accomplishment because it took a lot. Uh, it, it took years to make it happen. But what it does for the employees is provide them uh, better uh, financial stability, not just when they're working, but when they retire. So that was, was a huge accomplishment. And the, the second and close to that is just putting out better equipment for our officers to use in the field so they can stay in the field, such as the laptop computers, you know, improving the car so that everybody have um, the equipment in that car. Every officer has his or her own car. Uh, recently, uh, we just been awarded a uh, $467,000 grant to fund body cameras and, and uh, new laptop computers. And I'm hoping that ball can get rolling before I leave, but it's those things that you all are pub public may look at it as toys and equipment, but it's better it, it's, it's to better provide a service to you. And I think those two go hand in hand is with the equipment and being able to um, increase the, um, the living wage of, of the employees. Okay. Is this gonna be bittersweet for you? <laughs> Uh, probably not. It, it, it's um, like I said at the beginning. <clears throat> I started police in 1985, and, it, and and mentally I've been preparing for it since I started working on my dissertation, which was you know in, in 2014, is the retiring aspect of it. The only thing bitter about it is leaving friends as with any job, but no, it, it's um, I, I'm really looking forward to. Um, uh, the academic side of things. So I often talk about writing a book. Uh, so I, I want to get into, y'all not going to be in it. I'm just thought I'd throw that out there. But I, I want to get into, to put it in. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I want to get into the aspect of it because <clears throat> a passion that I have is uh, reform. That we can't jail our way out of crime. So that's the bitter part is, is uh, Leaving it to hands on, being able to make the make the arrest and do those things, but also knowing that behind the scenes I can help create legislation, um, policy, uh, in terms of how can we improve our relationship uh, with the police and the community. So that's that's the bitter part, and that's the toughest question you asked because I didn't want to talk about the bitter, but very good question. Thank you. Yeah, um, we know that there have been times where you. Uh, the relationship with the police department has not been on you know the best of terms right and as you uh get ready to retire and you reflect back on the things that have happened uh with you concerning uh the uh, department uh what is your takeaway absolutely much more improved uh, you know some of y'all may not know this but i did my dissertation on the department on how we uh, address the uh, financial crisis and one of the things I talked about was the use of force mm -hmm. and of course use of force a lot go with do we practice de-escalation technique do we talk to people talking down well in 2008 uh, we had 195 incidents of use of force um, that we used and in 2015 the last year of the study we had 41 so I think with that and really pushing the fact of Let's learn how to talk to our community. Let's partner with our community. Let's, let's, uh, you know, the mayor save initiative with everyone coming together and work. Uh, those things are what we need to continue to do and that I want to encourage the community uh, to do. So I think the officers, um, um, not that we were on the negative side before I became chief, but we significantly improved. And I've, I've received a ton of comments from citizens saying, your officers are talking much better than when I remember five years ago, six years ago. So, but my word to them and you all is that we don't want to stop. It, it, it was never about Chief Holmes. It's always work hard to improve the relationship with the community. Now, let me say this too, and, and also piggyback off of that. Uh, the city of Monroe has six unions, six unions. They've had it prior to my coming and we still have it. 
and they consist of employees uh, who work extremely hard each and every day trying to uh, make sure that uh, there is a, a positive impact on the city as a whole. Um, these unions have representatives and when they meet, they meet to talk about conditions, talk about equipment, talk about pay, and talk about a number of things. And so, as I mentioned, I've served with three mayors and uh, three police chiefs and two interims. And I don't think that there's been one where there has been some type of challenge where the union thought that things should be uh, something different. The union uh, wanted for their members um, better pay and um, there have been t there's been times when they're wanting uh, they have issues so <clears throat> and then start with uh, chief Holmes and it's not going to end with it uh, not just the police department but other dep other unions as well and that's to be expected but uh, they work hard every day uh, in the police department they work hard every day in the other unions and so uh, uh, we're proud of them we appreciate them and from an administrative standpoint we try to do everything that we can to provide the very best working condition that we possibly can, as well as pay um, in addition to the other departments. Uh, Chief mentioned the uh, pay raise that he gave, a 10% pay raise, which was significant. And I do know uh, he was working on another one, trying to get another one to, to get it up that ladder. Um, but also uh, what some people forget, I believe it was in 2005, we passed a sales tax. Uh, in which it brought our police a department, our men and women, up the ladder a little bit. So it's been a, been a challenge, but that's been... 2008. Yeah, 2008. So that's been significant improvement. May I have another question for the Chief? No. Um, you were my criminal justice professor at ULM. So it's been a long a time, hasn't it? Yes. yes. A lot of stuff you were talking about, I remember from your course. Right. Uh, you were a, uh, an officer within the department before right. you became Chief. What are some things that you've seen as Chief uh, that some of the officers still probably won't understand from their perspective sitting up, up high. I, I think, uh, and you're talking about from the officer standpoint of view, yeah. I, I think our biggest challenge is, and um, and, and it's funny you ask it because I was thinking of saying this as the last joke kind of on my way out the door. So I kind of tell you a joke first, put that in perspective, and he remembered this. When I started in 1985, um, I was a ticket writer. If I stop you, I didn't care how good you look, how rich you were, black, white, man, woman. If I stop you, we were not having a social engagement. You got a ticket, period. And I, I, I wrote the number of tickets. So the joke I was going to say is in my last week, you got a fair game. I hadn't written a ticket since 2003. So uh, just just give me a fair warning. But you, the man, as an example, and, and what I think that uh, when we talk about the office today, or offices in general, uh, to be honest, where we have to improve, is understanding that our role is to uh, keep the peace, um, to be guardians of, of, uh, of our society and not warriors, and to understand that we need to, um, you know, enforce the law and not be in law enforcement, meaning that we don't have to ticket everybody. We don't have to put everybody in jail. It's about trying to find a, a solution to the problem. And even as chief, and, and something that I talk about when I go around uh, and in the training session that I talk with the department, is always about cultural diversity and, and, and understanding different cultures, understanding why some get out and yell at you and fuss at you and scream at you. It's not you the person, it's you the uniform. And what they look at is this ticket is gonna cost me $300. They're mad at the price of the ticket, they're not mad at you. And if you understand, let them vent. Typically you still write that ticket and get a handshake. So uh, I've seen drastic improvement from when I police and as chief in terms of where we have uh, uh, more officers communicating properly as they should. I just don't want us to, you know, not, not Monroe specifically, but the profession to stop and go backwards and lose that. If we can, you know, continue to enhance our communication skills with our community. Um, what we talked about um, in, in your CJ class back, you know, several years ago, we'll see the relationship get stronger. When that relationship gets stronger, people be more willing to talk and work with the police, and then we can address crime-related issues. So uh, that's that's what I see in terms of what our officers are. And we have some energetic guys. They really do a good job. And, and uh, I just, you guys should support them because they're really trying hard to do a very good job and keep us safe. We'll take one more question then we'll allow any final comments that we've achieved from there. I have a last question, and okay. this could be for both of y'all. Sure. Um, how much um, responsibility 
either falls on the chief or just seems like it falls on the chief when people start, you know, talking about crime in this city. And this could be for either of y'all. <laughs> well, I've, there's no question that usually when you're talking about anything relative to the city, the mayor's name is mentioned yeah. first. And so uh, there's a lot of responsibility that falls on the mayor. And I'm the mayor of the city of Monroe, and I accept that responsibility. The uh, citizens of Monroe has given me that responsibility by electing me and re-electing me several times. Of course, when, once I appoint my department heads, and in this case, the chief of police, there's a lot of responsibility. The chief of police is the leader, and his staff, his executive folks, along with the men and women, uh, they're part of helping to do everything that we can about crime. Uh, and reducing crime. But what most people need to know is is more than about suppression. It's more than about putting people in jail. That's one component and right. a good component. Right. But there are other things and that's why we're having these meetings that we're having trying to address uh, after school tutorial, faith-based initiative, le uh, legislative uh, opportunities as well as uh, recreation and a number of other things that the people have come together and want to do something about it. And that's why I've had so much passion about when people complain, uh, okay, that's fine when you complain, but what are you gonna do after you complain? Because we need the community to come together to help. And the city of Monroe is no exception. Uh, no matter where you go, when I go to the U.S. Conference of Mayors, uh, that's one of the main workshops, that's one of the top priorities, is coming up with innovative and creative ways to address crime and reduce it considerably. And anything else is, is just not uh, pertinent or appropriate as far as we're concerned. And, and the, my last comments on that is, um, granted everything was the mayor said, but it, it's a shared responsibility dealing with crime. And you know, when we have, you know, everyone on social media or, you know, at the restaurants, whatever, talking about crime, uh, we need to quit talking about it and, you know, get out and help and be active. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, the meeting Thursday night to say what a community is coming together Thursday night. That room should be packed. Look, everybody is talking about what needs to be done. They want to help. Come out there and help. And we have to understand that it's a shared responsibility. So, yes, if it falls on uh, as a chief, you think about it. Uh, it's frustrating. You know, if there's a homicide and you wish that you could prevent it, we know we can't. But what we, what I always try to emphasize at all my community meetings that I've had, it's a shared responsibility. This community is not about North Monroe, South, East. It's one city. It's Monroe. And what impacts the South impacts the North. And sometimes we stay in our comfort zone and don't do anything, but we want things to change. So it's that shared responsibility. Uh, and, and that's the burden that the Chiefs carry, is trying to find ways to motivate the community to come out and be involved. Any closing comments? Okay, I, I just want to, again, I want to thank all of you for being here um, again. Thank you very much, thank you, Mayor. Chief, appreciate, appreciate uh, for your service here. And we obviously wish him well after uh, July 30th. Well, we wish him well between now and July 30th. <laughs> so I, I want to leave that out. I, I don't want a different span put on that. But I want to say um, you'll be receiving, some, I'm sure, some more anonymous calls. And I just want you to know today that we're not going to be, and I'm not going to be addressing anonymous calls. Um, we're going to be addressing trying to make the transition from chief to interim and ultimately a new chief. And so we'll be preparing to do that. Uh, again, having gone through this, it's very challenging trying to go through the process for a number of different reasons. Uh, the most difficult one of any department head uh, that I have to appoint. So again, uh, we're going to be concentrating on that. So questions that you have about that and about the uh, interim and moving forward in the process, uh, of course, we'll be answering, but we will not be answering any uh, uh, anonymous calls that you may be uh, receiving uh, in the in the previous case on yesterday that was inaccurate. All right. Okay. Thank you all very much. much. Let, let me say one thank you. I, I thank the media. Um, I created a public uh, information officer when I became chief, and you guys have been great. I hadn't always agreed with stories, but I thought you did an outstanding job. You got information out there. And that's what you're doing. I tried to be as transparent as I, as I could. I really thank you all for trying to push that message out in terms of how we keep our community safe. So I wanted to make sure I acknowledge you all as well. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.